We're working on an RCA VR508. This is a 1996 VHS VCR. It's a mono machine. This is a Panasonic made VCR. And I've been told that it just, it won't work. It's shut down. I haven't checked it. It, it won't load a tape or it will load a tape and it won't eject the tape. So before I'm going to uh, take the thing apart, I'm gonna, before, before you even plug it in, I'm gonna take it apart. And we'll take a look at this. This is a customer's machine. People still use VHS machines. So we're gonna give this one the once over. This is one of the good Panasonic or relatively good Panasonic made machines. We'll get the top off this thing first and then see what's happening with it. So as you can see, here's the chassis to this one. It's one of the, the later generations of Panasonic. Single board solution, got a power supply over here and your cassette loading mechanism. This is just a four head mono machine. So let's power it up and see what's happening with it. So I've got my bench plasma now hooked up to this set. And oh, we can see what's happening right now. The tape's not going in. See that? Tape is stuck. Will not go in. Will not pass go. Do not continue. Let's take this mechanism apart and see why the tape is not going in. So the first thing we have to do is release the front cover. We do that by releasing the tabs on the side and on the top and the bottom. So there's the tabs on the top. There's another one up here on the side and there's a couple of tabs on the bottom. And we just release those tabs. Show you where they are. They're right down here. Just release those tabs and the front loading mechanism will pop off the unit. Or the front, I should say the front loading mechanism, the front cover will pop off the unit. Now we need to remove the mechanism from the VCR. We're going to take the entire mechanical mechanism out and work on it as an assembly. So that requires removing these screws at the back here. This one big screw, as well as on the back, there's a screw at the back here that has to come out. The red screws on top of the mechanism. There are three screws on the bottom that need to come out. Actually, there's more. There's four screws. We have to take the bottom plate off first. So we remove the, the ground screw and the grounding screw in over on both corners here. Very important. There's a screw down that goes down through the power supply here. It's a red screw down here. That has to come out because it holds the bottom cover on that goes down in through the bottom cover, I think. Yeah, that goes in through, goes in through here and holds that cover in place. So if you don't take that screw out, you're not gonna take the bottom cover off this thing. Once we've got the bottom cover off, we have a couple of red screws that have to come out. There and there. And now we can start to strip down the mechanism. We have another red screw over here that has to come out. And we have two more screws down through the chassis, right down through these holes that have to come out. And two more black screws on the front that have to come out. And now we should be able to just lift the mechanism out. It's on a, a hinged connector on the back, just hold the circuit board down and lift the board out. And we can lift the entire chassis out and set aside the electronics as the problem on this is all mechanical. We're going to have to clean the mode switch on this unit and retime more than likely the front loading mechanism, but I want to make sure that there's no parts that are broken on this thing first. 
So I'm going to lift the front loading mechanism off. I do that by removing the two retaining screws. One here and one over there. Take out those two screws and then there's two more screws on the front that need to come out. And then I can lift off the cassette housing assembly so that I can inspect the cassette housing assembly and see that it is operating correctly. And I can do that just by releasing the little catches here on either side and just see that the mechanism goes down through its paces and loads correctly. As long as the mechanism loads correctly then I think we're probably okay. I don't see any parts that are broken on here. The slide is operating nice and smoothly and if I push the slide back as you can see if I pull the slide forward that locks down the tape. And if I push the slide back it will raise the mechanism and eject the tape. So that, that part is good. I think probably what happened is we got out of alignment. There's an alignment mark here that has to line up with the edge of the... I'll show you the little gear here that it lines up with. There's a little metal cog right down in the corner there. That the front loading mechanism, this is the gear that drives the front loading mechanism. We work the mechanism through by hand by turning the loading motor. The loading motor is down here. We can turn the mechanism by hand and actually take the entire mechanism through its paces. So right now this thing thinks the tape is loaded. I want to I want to reject this. So I want to wind this thing back. So I'm turning the gear clockwise. I'm turning it this direction here. I want to wind this mechanism back to unload the tape. Okay, as we wind back the mechanism, you'll see that the I'll turn it right way here. The, the front loading gear here on the side, uh, where are we here? Right here. It's going to turn back as it would when the tape is being ejected because what had happened was someone had forced the tape into this machine and skipped the teeth. So the machine was trying to load a tape but couldn't. The mechanism was out of time. That can happen if the load of the um, encoder switch gets dirty. So we're going to take the encoder switch out and we're going to clean it. Now I've got all the timing marks here. You know, I, we've, we've looked at one of these before on another, on another machine. I, I went through the mechanism on another one of these machines before. That was one of my machines, but this is one for service. You'll see the timing marks here are pointing the gear. The little hole in the gear here is pointing towards that hole. So we know that the mechanism is, is in time. That's our timing marks. So our gears are in time, we don't have a problem with that. I think what we have is we have a, a, a mode switch that is dirty. So we're going to clean the mode switch on this machine and put it back together. And that is all I'm going to do. As, and clean heads of course, but that is all I'm going to do on this because I believe that's probably the only problem with this machine. So we'll, we'll unsolder the mode switch. I'm going to use solder wick for this stuff, it's faster. As you can see, got that stuff off right away. Remove the screw and remove the switch. Just like that. Now we can pop the switch apart. Okay, there we got the switch apart. I don't know if you saw that or not, but as you can see, the switch is relatively. Gunji. So we're going to clean this up. Let's take a, a Q tip. Just wipe all the dirt out of it and then we'll put some. Oh, that's a good Q tip. It broke. Just wipe all the dirt out of this thing.
same with the contacts here. Let's clean those off. Maybe just add a bit more tension to them. Let's pull them back a bit. You have a bit more tension to the springs. And then we're going to put some cleaner. We'll just use neutral contact cleaner. We'll just give the switch a shot. That will protect the contacts and keep them clean. And then just snap the switch back together. Like that. And then we'll just spin it a bit. Make sure we polish up the contacts good. And then we just need to time the switch. Remember that our hole lines up and we know that our switch is in time. If we look at the two little arrows here, these two little arrows will point at each other. That way we know that the switch is timed up this way and this little hole on the other side here will line up with the hole in the cam gear which is going to be right here. So those will line up with each other. So as I put the switch back in, it's going to move these wires out of the way. We'll reinsert the switch, drop it in place and make sure that our holes line up. Which they do. As you can see. Right there. So now we can put our retaining screw back in. Gonna reattach the wires here. I'm just gonna move them out of the way so I can get the wires in behind. It's important to dress these wires correctly because you don't want them getting caught in the loading belt. That's why they have these little grooves here to put the wires in, hold them out of the way, and then down and behind this little catch. That way the loading motor wires are not going to get jammed up in the loading belt. Now if I want I can go through the rest of the mechanism operation. If I want to turn the loading gear or loading motor I can actually turn it and go through the whole loading cycle. So let's turn it and we'll take the whole mechanism through its loading cycle including loading up the guide post just to make sure that everything works as it's supposed to. So this is the loading gear that would load the front loading mechanism and it now stops at the end of its travel and the next thing that should happen is the P6 guide will extract the tape and start the loading cycle for that and then the next thing that will happen is the P1, 2 and 3 guides will start to move as the tape would be loaded into place. And then as it goes into the full play mode, the P1 guide over here will apply the back tension. And the pinch roller will engage over here so that the pinch roller is now making contact with the capstan motor. If I turn the, the uh, capstan motor from below, you'll see that the pendulum gear will transfer power to the take-up supply take-up reel and if I reverse it the other way it'll transfer power to the supply reel. So our mechanism is now loaded. We reverse the direction and the mechanism will unload.
Once the mechanism is unloaded, the P6 guide retracts and then the loading gear will engage to push the cassette mechanism to the eject position. And we arrive back at its rest position. The rest position is when the, the, the two dots are lining up here. And there'll be a, a loading timing mark right there on that metal gear. There's the timing mark. And that is going to line up with the timing mark on the front loading mechanism. So let's put the loading mechanism back in now. The loading mechanism simply snaps into place. There's a couple of little pins on the bottom here that are going to line up with a couple holes on the chassis. As long as you're in the fully eject position, when you drop the loading mechanism in, it should line up and drop into place. Just like that. And then we can proceed to put our screws back in to hold the loading mechanism to the chassis. We're installing the screws to hold the mechanism in place. And the two on the front. Okay, now we just have to resolder our encoder switch for placing the mechanism back in the machine. We're now ready to reassemble the mechanism back into the circuitry. We have to line up the two connectors with these two knuckle connectors down here. So we just line up the notches on the end of them. There's little two little pins that line up. Snap them in place and the mechanism should drop right in like that. And then we can proceed to put our screws back in to hold the mechanism in place. That should be enough for testing. Now we can plug it in and make sure it works before we put the rest of the unit together. Because this unit, the buttons are, are on the chassis, they're hard to get out. I'm just going to snap the front of the uh, cover back on before testing it because I, I know it's going to work. So we'll Snap the front on and then we'll power it up and test it. So I got the front cover here, I gotta make sure to open the, to open the cover up. It's gotta clear this little catch. So we just put the cover in, snap the front cover on. Now I can access all the buttons. We'll connect up our AV cable and I'll switch my monitor over to video one so we can test it. There we go, video one, plug in the power, power on, we have a blue screen, and the tape now loads like it's supposed to, and if we press play, we have a picture. Nice scratch in my tape there, that's what's causing that. If you look down on the tape, you'll see See the scratch? That's from cleaning the head using my fingernail. This tape got rewound. I had a clogged head and I was using my fingernail to try and clear the clog. So if you're going to clear a clog by mashing the head between your fingernail and the tape, keep in mind you will scratch the tape. So don't do it with a tape that, that uh, is valuable. Uh, I do it with my color bar tape. <laughs> That's it. Okay, this is fixed. Let's take the tape out. We can eject it. I'm going to clean the machine. Phone the customer up and tell them that I've got their machine ready to deliver back to them and make somebody happy. So we got a piece of paper. Just regular writing paper works fine. Just put some alcohol on it. Hold it up against the head drum and rotate the head drum counterclockwise applying slight pressure while you do it.
that'll take off the dirt from the video head. For the audio head, we're going to use the regular Q-tip method. Let's get to go get a clean one as this one's dirty. I'll be putting more dirt on. Oh, I got one here. Got a nice new one here that's never been used, so... Same thing. Soak the uh, Q-tip. Bring the camera in kind of close so you can see what I'm doing. And we're just going to use this to... I'm going to unplug the power because this machine will try to go into loading mode if I accidentally interrupt the uh, photo sensors. That's what triggers it. I don't want the thing trying to load while I've got my fingers in there because I don't want to knock the alignment out. Clean the audio head. Clean the full erase head. We can even clean the lower drum. As long as we avoid the video heads, we can clean the lower drum with this and clean the tape guides. Tension arm. Capstan shaft and pinch roller. Just rotating the pinch roller with my, th or my capstan shaft with my thumb. And yeah, I would say that we got a bit of dirt out of there. Okay, plug it in. We'll give it one final, one final playback test. And then it goes, the top goes on it. The rest of the screws go in it, of course, as well. So there's the final playback test. Press play. You can hear my color bar tone. Beautiful. Looks great. Okay, eject the tape. The rest of the screws can now go in. We've got this metal bracket that goes in the back. Goes down like that. That's held in place by a large screw. Where is it? It's that big red one there. This, this red one with the large top on it goes over here. Not a washer. It looks like a washer, but it's actually not. It's actually part of the screw. That goes in over there. More red screws on the bottom that hold the board up against the chassis. These two screws here. Bottom cover. Goes on like that. Slides in place. That's the one, that's the machine screw. What did I do with it? Another red screw that goes down through the top here, holds that power supply in place, and grounds it to the metal base. Finally, the top cover. Two screws in the back. Some of these screws go into metal um, shields, so it's important that you put a bit of torque on them because they are actually used as part of the grounding, like the screw over here. This screw grounds to the power supply, the base. It's also grounded on with that screw that goes through from the bottom. And that's actually quite important on these sets that have got a metal cabinet. 
you'll want to ground all the metal parts as they provide shielding. There you go. That's another one fixed, saved from the recycle bin.